in a discussion with a family member who has apparently studied these pineal gland wonderful attributes and benefits. He tried to convince me that this gland explains many of the supernatural things that we feel when we sleep or when we are in near-death experiences and a myriad of other symptoms that happen to us in our lives. As any skeptical person will do, I call them bullshit of all of it, but suspended my final opinion upon making a research about it. I have done it and I was appalled by what I found about this minuscule gland inside our brains. The pineal gland is an endocrine gland, like the pituitary gland, thyroid gland, adrenal gland, and pancreas. Like other endocrine glands, it secretes hormone, in this case, melatonin. The pineal gland was the last endocrine gland to have its function unveiled, partially because of its small size, roughly that of a pea, and its structural uniformity. It was not until the 1960s that scientists determined its function, having thought for several decades that it was merely a vestigial organ like the appendix. Because of our relative ignorance about the pineal gland for so long, it became the object of mythical theories and attributions. René Descartes called it the seat of the soul because it appeared to be the only brain structure not composed of two symmetrical parts, although later analysis proved this to be untrue. Compounding this rumor was the fact that the pineal gland is lodged very deep in the brain, close to its center. Various shaman types have claimed that the pineal gland secretes natural psychedelics and is somehow a connection between an earthly realm and a spirit world. These speculations are likely false. In reality, the melatonin secreted by the pineal gland is responsible for various aspects of sexual development, animal hibernation, metabolism, and seasonal breathing. The gland secretes its hormone in sync with circadian rhythms, releasing more in the dark and less in the light. This probably contributes to minimize sexual thoughts while sleeping. In children, the pineal gland secretes more melatonin than in adults, which is said to inhibit sexual development. After puberty, the pineal gland shrinks and releases less melatonin. Calcium, phosphoro, and fluoride deposits in the pineal gland have been correlated with aging, meaning that as the brain ages, more deposits collect. Pineolocytes, the cells in the pineal gland, in many non-mammalian vertebrates have a strong resemblance to the photoreceptor cells of the eye. Some evolutionary biologists believe that the vertebrate pineal cells share a common evolutionary ancestor with the retinal cells. Modern living fossils like the lamprey and the tuatara and some other vertebrates that have a parietal organ or third eye, which in some of them is photosensitive, the third eye represents evolution's earlier approach to melatonin. Is N-acetyl-5-methoxytryptamine, a derivative of the amino acid tryptophan, which also has other functions in the central nervous system. The production of melatonin by the pineal gland is stimulated by darkness and inhibited by light. Photosensitive cells in the retina detect light and directly signal the SCN in training its rhythm to the 24-hour cycle in nature photoreception. Apparently, the internal secretion of the pineal gland inhibits the development of the reproductive gland because in cases where it is severely damaged in children, the result is accelerated development of the sexual organs and the skeleton. So because of these determined functions of the pineal gland and our relative ignorance about it, it isn't difficult to imagine how, with these photoreceptors' capabilities, they call it an eye. Continuing with our review of what this pineal gland does, in some recent studies, it has been shown that the degree of pineal gland calcification is significantly higher in Alzheimer's disease patients versus other types of dementia. 
The calcification is the accumulation of calcium in the gland. And there is the reason of another myth or attribution of this gland. There is a lot of people selling products to decalcify or clean your pineal gland. Treatments that are impossible to prove that they work or they can achieve any cleaning at all. But as I mentioned before, calcium phosphate and fluoride deposits have to do with aging. Well, there is another conspiracy theory relating with the water fluoridation. It means that when government put fluoride in water to prevent tooth decay, but people say that this fluoride is to control the mind of the people. So indeed, also, this is another conspiracy theory attached to this land. So, why is all this mythicism, metaphysics and philosophy attached all around this gland? Well, the secretory activity of the pineal gland is only partially understood. Historically, its location deep in the brain suggested the philosophers that it possesses a particular importance. This combination led to its being regarded as a mystery gland with mystical, metaphysical and occult theories surrounding its perceived function. As I mentioned, René Descartes declared that it was the principal seat of the soul. Numerous spiritual philosophies contain the notion of an inner third eye that is related to the Atna Chakra and also the pineal gland and to which is attributed significant and mythical awakening of or enlightenment, clairvoyant perception and higher states of consciousness. This idea occurs historically in ancient Central and East Asia and also is contemporary metaphysical theories relating to yoga, theosophy, pagan religious and New Age spiritual philosophies. But wait, it gets worse because this spiritual meaning also gets distorted. The I thing is also connected somehow to the Illuminati as this depiction suggests. No matter the angle these misconceptions get, the truth remains that it is a gland that science does not understand completely, but has had a good start into getting to understand it, and so far none of the evidence points toward no natural explanation. But there is a whole bunch of people who create these beliefs and these scams based on this gap in our understanding of science. It doesn't help either that the Russians and the United States did try to hire telepaths to do remote viewing back in the day, but due to inaccuracies, you can understand as they got bullshitted by con jobs. Both countries canned their respective programs. Unfortunately, since the government did have this program, many people like to use it to claim legitimacy for ESP while ignoring that the program didn't work at all and was a catastrophic failure. In November 1956, a book called The Third Eye was published in the United Kingdom. It was written by a man named Tuesday Lawson Rampa and purported to relate his experiences while growing up in a monastery in Tibet after being sent there at the age of seven. The title of the book is derived from an operation similar of trepanation that Rampa claimed he had in which a small hole was driven his forehead to rouse the third eye and allow stronger powers of clairvoyance. Cyril Henry Hopkins, born in April of 1910 and died in January of 81, more popularly known as Tuesday Lopsang Rampa, was a writer who claimed to have been a Lama in Tibet before spending the second part of his life in the body of a British man. Hosking described himself as the host of Tuesday Lopsang Rampa. The name Tuesday relates to the claim in the third eye that Tibetans are named after the day of the week of which they were born. Also, it is included that since fluoride can contribute to the calcification of this gland, people consider fluoridation is a conspiracy to damage the health or control the mind of the people. So how this fluoridation become a normal part of municipal water supply? It all goes back to an early 20th century dentist named Dr. Frederick Mackay, 
who practiced dentistry in Colorado, noticed that a lot of his patients seemed to have brown teeth. In Texas, brown teeth were so prevalent that they were simply called Texas teeth. Dr. McKay spent 30 years investigating the cause. Why? Because it turned out that people with Texas teeth also had extremely low level of dental decay. If you had brown teeth, you were only one third as likely to have cavities. Finally, in 1931, it was determined that naturally occurring fluoride in the local drinking water was responsible for both the discoloration and the lack of decay. Texas and Colorado has extremely high levels of natural fluoride, causing the discoloration and condition now known as dental fluorosis, which is harmless if a tad unattractive. Years of research and testing in different cities and states conducted by the National Health Service determined that one part per million was the ideal proportion given the same protection from decay and avoiding the dental fluorosis. Even since then, it has been the standard practice to regulate fluoride levels in municipal water supplies to one part per million. There has been broad scientific and medical consensus for decades that one part per million of fluoride is best for health and exactly zero rigorously conducted scientific trials that have indicated any sign of danger. For all practical purposes, it is all an over and done with issue. So fluoridation of municipal water is not a conspiracy and does not damage our health or assist in controlling our minds. In the same subject, Dr. Rick Strassman conducted a research in the psychedelic dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, in the 1990s at the University of New Mexico, and he speculated that the pineal gland plays a role in the production of DMT in the human brain. So, a lot of cases who believe these pineal gland properties, in order to clean it, usually take DMT, and as we know, DMT is a psychedelic drug which make people dream, see, and feel extracorporeal experiences. So, many of these people that start meditating and reading these nice books about the mind and having some really cool dreams, maybe the reason why they're experiencing all of this is because they're taking a little bit of DMT from time to time. Why? Because those people believe that to unlock the spiritual potential of the pineal gland, that person should invariably take a little bit of DMT. There is a combination and correlation of those things which make people who take DMT and believe in these pineal gland benefits feel very great and good and actually believe that to have a transcendental trip into the supernatural. But in fact, it's the same kind of products that they take in order to cleanse or enhance the properties of the pineal gland. My conclusion is that it's all a whole bunch of nonsense that was created because of a gap in our understanding of the science behind the pineal gland. Most of it is now understood and there is no reason whatsoever to keep this backward kind of thinking. Thank you for your attention.